Next, uh, so now I have a storm attack plan. Now I have to have a repeatable process. And there's three areas where we need to have a repeatable process. I need a repeatable training process. Like I bring people in, I train them like this. Um, I have a quick start thing to get them to the point of getting people signed up and into our world. Then I have an ongoing 90-day uh, growth plan. And then I have an annual like um, continuing education program. And laying out that and what that looks like, because like I said, if we train people well, we don't want them out there practicing on our prospects and clients. We want them to go out there and actually play the game. Practice happens in the office. That's where that training happens. And our goal was always to have somebody up to speed to the ability to sign a um, service agreement or contingency style agreement uh, after three days. Like we role play, we practice the door knocks and presentation, everything we needed to do. And until they could prove to us that they were capable, they weren't going out the door to go and represent my brand and my company and my reputation. And we've got to have that type of attitude. So many of us follow uh, a different approach. And we'll talk about that and the things that will hold you back. Fulfillment. So how is how am I going to fulfill every project from the time that we the insurance company says yes and we go and pick out colors with our customer, we turn an order in, what does it look like from there? So laying a, that out exactly, making that repeatable. And then finally, um, I'd have those two processes now kind of squared away. I have a training process and I have a job process and exactly how that's going to go ideally. I have a hiring process, this way of bringing people in and uh, is it one or two at a time because we're going to have a little bit more of a ride along approach to our training, which I would coach and advise against, but I understand. Um, and then also because we don't have the tools, like that's why we do ride along training. We haven't taken the time to build the tools, training uh, platform, uh, training manual, a coaching process, a training schedule, those type of things. We don't have that. So we put them with somebody that we hope represents us well, teaches them well. But the thing is, it's like the telephone game. Each person that you pass along to, uh, it gets distilled down, distilled down, distilled down. And that expert aspect, mastery aspect of being a salesperson uh, in our industry uh, breaks down to being average or less. So we actually want to have a, uh, a great process for hiring so that we can train them well. So that hiring process, what would that look like? I mean, I I've talked about part of it like, hey, let's go after friends first. That's the easiest and fastest. Let's go after our customers next. There's so many uh, folks out there right now that are struggling to find work and do things well. Opportunities create itself. I mean, that's a great way. Like get an email out. Hey, you're looking for a job change. We have opportunity. We can train you quickly. And uh, you can change your life financially as well as lifestyle wise in a culture that fits you. So those are steps one and two, like going after those. Now, step three is, where do I find people that fit what it is we do? And so um, taking that the next step further, we would want to build out on our website a careers page. We would want to market that careers page, putting it out on Facebook, putting it out on LinkedIn, putting it out on your various different um, career uh, job boards to see what that culture is like. Because the thing we forget is that we're a research society now. Before we buy anything, like your company and me coming to work for it, I'm going to go check you out. So I'm going to go check out your Google reviews. I'm going to go look at your website. Oh, there's a careers page. What is it? What does that have? Oh, there's a, there's a guy that actually works there. There's a video. And the guy talks about what it's like to work for you. The opportunity it's created, how it's changed his life, the culture he's involved in. That might be the thing that closes the deal with high quality talent. Explain what it looks like to do what it is you do and be honest about it. Don't hide anything. Whenever you downplay the hard work that's necessary, being on a roof, doing the things that we do, you set a false expectation. Set expectations up. We work hard. We challenge you. We're going to push you. We're going to help you reach heights and your potential that you never realized you had by working with our team. That's what people really want. They want to be challenged. They want to grow. They want opportunity. And so build your careers page around that and then drive traffic to it and sharing it with your network and saying, hey, network, if you know anybody, share this with them. And you'll be able to recruit and hire people pretty quickly. And then how do you go about qualifying them? How do you go about interviewing them? How do you go about um, going through the final interviews and that approach? 
that's a great place to probably get some coaching. I don't know, but this podcast would take too long if I covered all of that. But knowing that you need to have an approach for your hiring is super important. Now, my suggestion is hire at least two at a time, at least that. Um, I always like to hire about 10 at a time. I would hire 10. I would do uh, three days of training. Anybody that doesn't fit, it's okay. You can leave. It'd leave me with about eight. And those eight, I would pair up in twos and send them out together. Because when you have guys working together, they have peer pressure. And peer pressure is good. There's this healthy tension that that guy over there is knocking doors. I guess I'm going to keep knocking doors. And he sees him over here and he's still knocking doors. I'm going to keep knocking. And so it keeps this pressure on them. It gives them somebody to talk to that's at the same place as them. They're not left on an island out there. That's so many of the mistakes I see is just we hire a guy, give him a brief training. It's not very good. Go out there and get people to sign these contracts. And uh, he goes out by himself, gets his teeth kicked in for a couple of hours and goes, "Eh, it sounds like it'd be better to hang out at the bar. And that's where he goes. Or he goes home and watches TV or does something else because there's no pressure or healthy tension and support for him to do what it is that he does. Have your print and digital assets ready. Like you should have a folder that's like storm folder. Here's all my door hangers. Here's my flyers. Here's my letters I send out. Here's um, uh, my resources for my signs. Everything that you need. All of your contracts, whatever you need, you have all of those ready to go. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about like, that's all if it happens here locally. If you're going to chase one, which I don't suggest chasing and leaving, I I suggest catching. Be after a place that you actually want to be and want to stay. Because why would you go out there and obtain all this work and then leave? You got raving fans. They believe in you. They're your um, evangelist out there. And you're going to walk away from that if you do great work. That's crazy. You built this established company now that people trust and have reviews on. Wow, what a beautiful thing. So don't be a storm chaser. Be a storm catcher. Plan in advance where you want to go. Um, As a matter of fact, at one point, I held licenses in 38 different states because if something happened, I wanted to be prepared. Not only did I have that, but I had a uh, contract ready to go. That all I had to do was send to the printer. I had a uh, a mailing address, PO box usually, that allowed me to have an address. I had a local phone number plus an eight hundred number. I had these things in place before any of that happened, so that when it did happen, I was prepped and ready to go, and I knew exactly where I wanted to go to. For me, it was large metropolitan areas that I had picked out that were commonly, somewhat commonly, um, hit by storms. Well, your approach could be something different. You could be mid-market. You could be small market. There's all kinds of different ways to approach it. Probably getting some coaching on that that fits your culture and what you're after uh, would be something that's helpful to give you clarity on what you're you're chasing. So if you're going to chase it, catch it, have a plan for it, uh, take into consideration all of these things that I talked about because you have this print and digital media that's got to go out and got to go out quickly because speed to lead is the key. This idea of being first on the ground, being out there and getting after it fast, we're going to talk about in just a minute. Before we talk about that, let's talk about what will hold you back. So there's some things that are going to hold you back. First off, shooting from the hip. I see so many do it. Like they're they're running their, their daily stuff and, and they they um, you know, hey, I'm growing my business. I'm I'm doing my normal thing, and boom, a storm hits. There's no plan. Everybody runs out like chickens with their heads cut off, going to where they think the damage is, and uh, you never get what it was that you were after. And if you do get some of it, it's chaotic. There's no process for it. You're frustrated. Everybody's mad at each other. Drama's created, and it just becomes this. Um, disorganized chaos. Now, I don't mind organized chaos, but disorganized chaos is not good. Um, so being measured and thinking about what you're doing before you just go out there, run off half cocked, pretty good idea. So don't just shoot from the hip. Uh, lay out at least a formulation. Like if you're late to the game, a storm hits, now you got to do something. Lay the plan out first. I always talk about striking first and fast, but if you're going to strike first and fast, you better have at least a decent plan for it. So sit with your team, get on it right away, and write out a plan for how you're going to approach it with your goals, your resources, all that stuff under consideration. The other thing I'll hold you back is ride along training. Get rid of that garbage, whether it's a storm or not a storm. It's an absolute mess. It doesn't work very well. It takes forever to learn and ramp somebody up. When there's 
like proven approaches that ramp people up quicker. Um, you can normally get somebody up to speed in three to five days to the point of signing contracts out there. So teaching them your culture, teaching them uh, your door knocking or canvassing scripts or how to approach a door if you're running leads, your inspection process, your presentation, your how you help them solve the problem that they have, whether it's your system or with an insurance company, and then how to actually ask for the sale and close the deal and get to a commitment. Because that's the other thing that I see that'll hold you back out there. The idea that you have maybes. Yeah, meet my adjuster. Uh, you went up, you, you said, hey, my name is Jim. I'm with so-and-so roofing company. Uh, we're out doing inspections. We inspected all your neighbors. And so uh, I thought I'd stop by and see if you need an inspection. They go, yeah, sure. And you go up and you inspect. You didn't, first off, that's a mistake, number one. You didn't tell them anything about your company, you, your qualifications. You didn't establish your authority or credibility. So they don't even know you yet. So there's very little trust. I would highly suggest, hey, tell a little bit about your company story. Tell a little bit about um, what it is that you do, what you'll be doing, set expectations for your inspection. Uh, talk a little bit about how the process itself works and maybe some of the misconceptions that they may have um, versus what reality is. And so you're talking a little bit about process and like, hey, there's this insurance thing. They'll take care of it for you. It will cost you your deductible, but that's the only out-of-pocket expense. And we just want to help you get the information that you need to make a good choice. Getting some of that credibility, walk around the property with them and prove that you know what you're talking about. Those type of things will give your closing percentage a better chance of being much higher. So this idea of ride-along training, we want to avoid 100% because it leads to maybes. It leads to this, hey, uh, yeah, you have damage. Here's the pictures of it. Uh, would you like me to work with your insurance company? And they say, yeah, okay, I'll meet them out here, make a claim. They make a claim. A day gets set. They call you. You go meet them. Sure enough, they take care of it. And you come back to meet the homeowner and say, hey, great, we got it taken care of. All we need to do now is get your insurance paper. Well, um, can you give me an estimate? Because you didn't earn the job. You didn't earn the right to that business. So we don't want to follow that approach at all. If you want to learn more about that approach, we have the Rookie Quick Start for Insurance Sales. It is a great training course to get somebody up to speed in three days. Uh, but you don't have to use our stuff. I'm not telling you that. I'm just trying to help you. There's other people that have great storm restoration stuff. But if it's not built around three to five days and getting them through this course really quickly and then you coaching and training on it to ensure that it's there and role playing and practicing with them, um, I probably wouldn't do those things. Now, go build your own. I'm more power to you, please. It's a lot of work. And uh, do you have the skill to do it? Do you, are you that good of a coach? Are you that good of a trainer? Do you have that much experience? It's up to you which resources you use. But remember, that was part of the original plan. Which resources am I going to have? Do I have everything ready? Or can I third party it out to somebody? So really think about that. And that's the next thing. Uh, so ride along training is uh, something that's going to hold you back. A training program can speed you up. The next aspect that will hold you back is support. So now I've got all this opportunity. Uh, what third-party access do I have? Do I have some supplementing teams that could help me supplement jobs that maybe my salespeople wouldn't be good at? I can get pros doing it that would provide uh, a better experience for our customer. Uh, third-party answering services, third-party marketers, like these third-party folks that would allow you to optimize this dream storm situation without creating an entire nightmare. And then uh, lack of support in administration. Your administrative team isn't deep enough and wide enough and they get overwhelmed by the amount of um, opportunity that you bring in the door. How quickly can you ramp them up? Do you have training tools for them? That will hold you back if you can't build your administration team up quickly. If you can't build your administration team up quickly, those third-party resources like VAs and administration companies can actually help you fill those gaps. And then last but not least, do you have a mentor or coach that's walked this path before? Uh, maybe you've tried it a few times and didn't go quite the way you wanted. A mentor or coach could help you out with that. And I'm not trying to be self-serving here, but we help people get those things figured out quickly, solve problems, miss, uh, uh, avoid those mistakes that we would make throughout this process and really nail it. And we can do that in the heat of the battle, but we would prefer it to do uh, proactively and have you set up for whenever that situation happens. Taking a quantity over quality approach. 
You're going to go out there and you're going to go, hey, we're going to go get everybody. Just knock on every door, get everybody to say yes to meeting their adjuster. Uh, That's who we're going to be and that's what we're going to do. Um, And you get all these people that say, yeah, but are they, yeah? Are they, yes, I'm working with you and I know you're my contractor. Do I have a commitment? Is it the type of jobs that we want? Is it partials and we know they're partials, borderline damage and stuff like that instead of legitimate damage that, hey, we know we can get approved, making sure you got great damage, making sure you got the type of project you want to work on, the people that you want to work with, that gives you quality. And so your time spent on them is going to be fruitful. If you have quantity, you're going to spend a lot of wasted time on jobs that you don't shoot. We used to be like, hey, there's insurance companies we won't work with. Knock on the door, bam, bam, bam. Uh, Hi, my name is Jim Johnson. This is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, this is my company, a little bit about me. This is, uh, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, by the way, who's your insurance company? Hey, they're so-and-so. I'm not going to say anybody because people keep getting sued, but we all know who they are. Um, I'm sorry, Mrs. Jones. Um, it's unfortunate. I'll still do this inspection for you so you can have something, uh, to, uh, to approach and work through it with, but we don't work with insurance company. Boy, that hits hard, doesn't it? And that's a commitment of saying no to somebody. Like, hey, I've got some borderline damage up there. Now, if it's obvious, yeah, sure, we'll figure it out. But if it's borderline damage up there and you know those guys are jackass, you're going to spend a bunch of time wasted on that when I could be helping somebody with an insurance company that actually cares about them. And I would tell a homeowner that. And they're going to call their agent. And their agent's going to call the claims department. The claims department's going to call you. Make sure you give them your name, your information, everything. Anybody wants to talk to me about what I just said about their company, you tell them to call me. And when they get enough of those built up, they might just change how they approach their homeowners. That's part of our job too. I think that's the right thing to do and the fair thing to do because I want to work with people that I can get the job executed for, who want to execute it with me, and who are not putting hurdles or obstacles in the path to being successful. I can come back to those folks later because they're going to have a hard time finding anybody anyway. And then... Like I said before, all of that type of stuff lead to maybes. I don't want maybes. I want yeses. I want commitment. So a signed piece of paper of some kind or another, at worst, a handshake. This handshake that Mr. Jones, if I meet your adjuster, you understand if I get it approved, I'm going to be the one doing the work. You get that, right? And that... um, when I do get the work, you're going to pick out colors with me. You're going to pay your deductible. We're going to get, I, like, I'm honest with them. Be clear. I don't want to waste my time on somebody that doesn't want to be my customer. That is trying to pull the wool over my eyes, take advantage of me or any of those type of things. And every once in a while, I'll do a handshake. But you new guys and anybody that doesn't have much experience, and even those that have experience, like, go get the signature. That's a, that's a promise on a piece of paper saying, yeah, if you do this, I'll do that. And that's what I want. I need some commitment. And you shouldn't be scared of that. If you can't get at least that, you should get out of this business because that's part of sales, commitment. So next piece, strike fast. I mean, you have your plan, you have your approach, you can train, you can, you've can. got repeatable processes, you, you know what's going to hold you back, so you've avoided those. Great, let's strike fast. Pros on the ground. Like storm happens, recon happens, pros on the ground. And we own the hood. Don't have this approach of, hey, everybody go out there and spread out all over the place and try to cover the entire city or the entire storm. Let's go after our bullseye. These are our targets. Let's go after them together as a team. Every vehicle in there, every guy in there, all working together to own that neighborhood. Because if you own the neighborhood, the others won't come in there. Yeah, signs everywhere. You got, you, you, they go, oh, well, this one's been tapped out. I got to go find something else. Now, we all go, well, we're missing out on all this other opportunity out there. And I've got these honey holes. I want to hide like these sales guys that want to hide. Like, hey, I got this honey hole. The problem is you got a honey hole out there and you got a sign or two up and you're not working as good as you can because you're running over there to go handle that person. You're running on the other side of town to handle that person. Another company comes in like mine. We go, everybody out of the truck, let's go. And boom, you come back and we own that hood too. So own the hood with your team. Go get the hood. Now, while everybody's out there knocking the doors and getting the hood, we've got this leader. We call him the leapfrog leader. He's usually a team leader or a sales manager. And his job is to find the next hood. 
So he goes and he's doing his research. He's finding the bullseye, the ones we really want, this type of neighborhood. And he goes, okay, new guys that are being trained, boom, come in here. Guys that were working in the first one that aren't having the success rate that we would like, come on and move over into this neighborhood. Gets going and boom, we're now owning that hood. Boom, leapfrog again, find the new hood. Leapfrog, leapfrog, leapfrog. Your job as that leader is to give your team the confidence that they don't have to hide in a honey hole, that you're going to go out and help them find the work. And it's going to be easy because there's a lot of you. There's a lot of you and that builds credibility. I go, wow, man, they must be the only roofing company in town. I need to go with those guys. So leapfrog leader. Now, the leapfrog leader needs to get across to his team something very important. This is something that um, we developed Wow, 23 years ago. We call it 30 and 30. I talked about this earlier, 30 um, jobs. I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like very many. No, 30 and 30 days. I got 30 days to get 30 contracts. So I got these hoods I'm owning. Maybe the first one I get 30. I would like to split them up maybe 10, 10, and 10 on three different hoods, all really close together. So I'm not running all over the city because time is important, quality over quantity. And all of those folks should lead me to three more. So if I get 30 and I get three more from each one of them, that's 120. We were able to produce that consistently over and over and over again. Get 30. It was the mantra, 30 and 30 days, 30 and 30 days. If that's three a day, I don't care. Like, let's go. Work hard those first 30 days. Work like you've never worked before in your entire life. Go get them before anybody else can because we're doing a disservice to them if we allow another company to do their work. It needs to be your attitude and your mindset that you're doing everything you can to help those first 30 people as quickly as possible. So get that mantra going in your team, 30 and 30, 30 and 30, 30 and 30. And you're all about getting agreement, like get the agreements, get them committed, and then start meeting those adjusters. Some incentives. Everybody that gets to 30 and 30, do something cool. Have a big blowout party at your house, whatever it may be. But apply some incentive. You know, the reason people do things is because of incentive. There is nothing on this planet that we do without incentive. And when you understand and you can apply it correctly, um, you're going to get the results that you want. And earning the commissions is just, that's the standard. And I'm going to earn the commissions. I might earn more commissions because I sell a whole lot. And that's some incentive. But what's the thing that creates this let's go attitude? Okay. It could be a trip at the end of the year. If everybody does a certain thing, it could be something at the end of a month. It could be, Hey, uh, all, everybody that signs over this many, like shooting for that 30 and 30 saying, Hey, 30 is the number. Everybody that signs them, I'm going to do this for, maybe we do a box seat at a football game or something like that. Something that they go, Oh, that's a little extra. I want to go get that. Um, giving them uh, recognition through, um, mastery. So things like trophies, black shirts, uh, wrestling belts, those type of things. Guys really love that kind of recognition and being known that I'm the best. I want other people to know that I'm the best. Uh, Our top guys, if they would go get 30 and 30, they all got these awesome, badass black shirts. They were the only ones that were allowed black shirts. That's it. And they lost them at the end of the year. Next year, we got to get them again. So they had to give them back. Uh, but they wore them with pride into every meeting, that type of thing. Trophies, incentives, keep, keep those in mind. It will push people a little bit further. And you're going to have the overhead for sure to cover it if you do these type of things. And then last but not least on the strike fast, first to build wins. Build that first job as soon as you get a total. It's total is going to get done. I don't even care what the numbers are. I'm putting that roof on as fast as I possibly can. I'm probably going to do two or three in a neighborhood in each one of the neighborhoods that I get because the ones that have activity are doing something and see my work. That's where those extra three from the 30 and 30 come from. I can go, Hey, we're doing work. Come see, come check us out. Come watch what we're going to do. Throw a big ass party while you're there. Those always are great. Put a notification out on all the doors. Hey, we're going to be doing our first build. You're a week into the storm. You're already building your first job. And you're inviting everybody over, come see what the experience is like with my company. It's going to be different than anything you've ever seen before. And you have the show put together. 
And whether you're using catch-alls or equipters, uh, your crew is dressed tight, your supervisor's out there watching the job, they're interacting with the folks that are there. Who knows? Maybe you even got some games and, you know, maybe you're throwing beanbags or something. Uh, win, a, win a free inspection by throwing beanbags. There could be all kinds of different ways to make it an event that people want to attend. I used to do barbecue. Like, hey, here's a bunch of barbecue. I'd smoke it up myself, invite everybody over to watch this amazing job that we're going to do. Boom, sign 30 more people in a day. You have those type of opportunities in these type of situations if you just think a little bit about how to go about doing it. So first build wins, get that roof on as quickly as possible. Now, the last part of this um, podcast today what, that I hope helps you optimize this dream storm situation and avoid the nightmare that can happen is culture is king and really this hero culture attitude. You got to think about it. Um, no matter how well you have it planned out, no matter um, how structured you are and process oriented and training savvy and hiring capable and crew accessible you are, you're going to add a lot of volume to a situation that wasn't like that before, which is going to add some stress. It's going to create mistakes. You're going to have uh, people that are out of time with time management. We got to step in. We got to step in and we got to get everybody bought in in administration and production and sales that we're here to help and serve each other. We're here to be a hero to the other guy. We need to be actually asking, how do I help you? How can I help you go get more? Because the more you get, the more safe my job is. And how do we share something with them? They help you out. How do you share with them? How do you take a little bit of your commissions and do something nice or give it to them? for them helping you do something you were supposed to do as a salesperson. If you can get that culture going, this creation where uh, those who are serving you, you reward and you serve others and say, Hey, you know, Benny, I see you're really busy with all this stuff. What can I do to help you out from a sales perspective? And she says, take more pictures. You take more pictures. Absolutely. I will make sure that that happens, but we stand in the gap between each other. We don't start fighting because it gets stressful and it's hard and not everybody's doing everything exactly the way we, we planned. We stand in the gap. The leaders stand in the gap and they get between production and sales who is battling over the quality of the work that's being turned in. Between administration and production and administration and sales, us leaders stand in the gap and say, okay, I get it. We have a problem here. Come to me. Let's get this handled. Let's not create something that kills our culture. Our culture is key. The behaviors, you got these core values, stick to them. Don't hire outside of your culture. And this will happen. You get a storm, somebody calls, hey, man, I know everything there is to know about selling in a storm. I'll come do it for you. Well, let me ask you a little bit. Like, let me tell you a little bit about our culture, what we expect, how we train, what's going to happen. And they're like, oh, no, I know how to do this. You don't have to worry about me. I'll just do my thing. Don't worry about me. Nope, not part of my culture. Out. Even if he was good and able to procure a lot of business, he's going to set an example that I'm not looking for. I want the example of our core values, the way we approach things, these raving fans that we create, the way that we approach the business. If you don't want to be a part of that and you don't want to be involved in that and you're just this mercenary, that's not who I need. I want people that are on the team. We're here to work together to achieve a mission. All of this comes down to leadership. Do we have the leadership that's prepared? Do we have the leadership that's put the resources together? Do we have the leadership that has the experience and coaching ability and the leadership that's willing to stand in the gap when things get chaotic? Because that standing in the gap is either going to create that dream scenario for you that, wow, we had a hell of a year. That was amazing. It was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of stress. But boy, we stood up to the test. We fought through together. We came together instead of becoming divided, and that was awesome, or the nightmare situation. We created more work than we could handle. We didn't have the processes to handle it. We didn't have the team that was willing or culture that supported handling it, and it all blew up in our faces. We see it over and over and over again. And so many times it leads to a bankruptcy, it leads to a business closing, it leads to a name change, it leads to all of these different things that just none of us want to deal with. And the answers are there. I hope this helps you today. I hope this helps you um, during this time because there's been 2.4 million homes damaged already this year. I don't see it stopping anytime soon. I want to have you prepared. I want you to get the most out of it. I want you to have that dream sequence. If you need help with this, 
um, go to our website. It's contractorcoachpro.com. Scroll down a little bit. You'll see a button that says take assessment. Take that contractor assessment. Um, it'll take you 15, 20 minutes. It's no joke. It's a real assessment. It's going to give us some insight into your company, where you're weak, where you're strong. And then we'll do a free coaching call with you. Not a sales pitch or any of that kind of stuff. We're going to look for the two or three things that we could help you with that would maybe help you level up. And if we see that you're handling storm work and doing some things like that, we're going to give you those two or three things. You like it? Great. And you want to get coaching? Awesome. If not, at least we served you well. We uh, gave you the ability to not how the bad things happen at the end. I hope this podcast was valuable to you. I hope that we bring you value each and every week whenever we're on here. I know this is a little bit of a different episode. I just thought the timing was right for it. So go create that dream, avoid the nightmare, and we'll see you on a episode in the future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Make sure you subscribe, download, and rate. We love that from you that are watching what we're doing. We hope that we're being helpful to our industry. See ya. We're out.